Till my heart starts racing But I don't know if I like this chasing And playing and waiting around It's a shame that my hands start shaking All of the time when you're around me But this time, this time Welcome back to the Moran family. So today's video is going to be my first trimester recap. So I'm going to talk to you guys about symptoms, craving, how I've been feeling. I have some ultrasound pictures to share with you guys, prenatal vitamins, all of that stuff. So if you guys are new here, my name is Brittany. I am a mom to three girls, Layla, who is six, Aurora, who is two, and Everly is my angel baby. So currently I am pregnant with baby number four. So this is our rainbow baby, which is so exciting. So currently right now I am 13 weeks and three days. Some people like to say your first trimester is over at 13 weeks and other people say 14 weeks. So I'm kind of in between that so I figured I would sit down and get this video up for you guys first thing I want to talk to you guys about is trying to conceive so it happened for us really quickly a lot quicker than I thought it was going to take it happened on our second month of trying so I tested positive my second cycle of trying which is so crazy I feel like if it took a lot longer for us and I was like constantly getting all these negative tests i feel like it would have really brought me down mentally so i feel really blessed that it happened really quickly so i tested positive february 18th so my last period was january 29th my expected ovulation day was february 9th i was not tracking my ovulation at all so i wasn't taking any ovulation test strips what I was doing was I had, it's called the Glow app. So I had the Glow app on my phone and I was tracking my periods because my periods have been irregular. So I wanted to keep track of my periods. And when you use an app like that, whenever you track your periods, it gives you like your expected ovulation day. Sometimes it's accurate, sometimes it's not. It's just an estimate. Like I said, I tested positive February 18th which was actually five days before my expected period. A lot of you guys were asking me why I tested so early, and the reason for that was because I was actually experiencing lots of pregnancy symptoms already. So I was very, very dizzy. I'm talking like I had to be careful not to stand up super fast because I thought for sure I was going to faint. Like I had to just close my eyes take a second, breathe, because I was so faint and dizzy for like a week straight before I tested positive. It was so bad. I thought for sure I was anemic. I thought my iron was low. I just knew something was up because I was so dizzy. I was actually that way when I was pregnant with Aurora and I had to be put on iron. I have been checked for this baby and it looks like I'm not anemic. So this was just pregnancy related another symptom that i had was headaches on and off and i'm talking about like bad headaches headaches that don't go away i tried taking tylenol didn't work i tried caffeine didn't work i tried drinking water didn't work taking naps literally nothing helped a symptom that i did have the day before testing which is kind of the symptom that pushed me over the edge leading to testing positive was being nauseous i was nauseous for the entire day before i tested and nothing helped it as well drinking water didn't help eating didn't help literally nothing helped just i didn't feel like eating and i was just really nauseous so i started thinking about all of the symptoms that i was having and that's what led me to testing positive because i was cramping was dizzy had headaches I was nauseous that's what led me to testing positive i did film my live pregnancy reaction video and then i also filmed like me telling my husband i was pregnant so i'll leave all of those videos linked down below if you guys want to check those out so those were all of my pregnancy symptoms before testing so after testing around like week four to five I was still very dizzy, very faint. I had to lay down for a while, just keep my eyes closed. So about like weeks six and eight, my appetite 
kind of was there it would like come and go sometimes i'd be really really hungry and then other days i didn't want to eat at all and i had to force myself to eat something so my appetite was all over the place at this point nothing really sounded good to me the only thing that sounded good to me was carbs bagels were my life during the first trimester literally the only thing that didn't make me nauseous the only thing that tasted good to me so bagels and cream cheese were my lifesaver another symptom that i had for weeks six to eight was i was so exhausted i'm not talking like regular exhaustion that you normally feel this was like times a hundred i was struggling so bad especially to you know keep up with the girls I also do homeschool Layla, so I was really struggling because I couldn't just lay down on the couch and sleep all day because I had children to take care of. I had to homeschool, and then I was also trying to get videos up for you guys, so I was really, really struggling. I was also really nauseous. This is around like six weeks is when the nausea just full on kicked in, and it didn't go away for like almost my whole first trimester. I never threw up once this time around i didn't really throw up with the girls either i did throw up a little bit with aurora and everly but it was only like a handful of times like i could count how many times i threw up on one hand so it wasn't bad at all but the nausea this time around has been really bad at seven weeks and four days is when we went in for my first ultrasound Thankfully, Benny was able to go into the first ultrasound with me because the coronavirus situation wasn't as bad yet. So they were still allowing husbands into the room. So here is the first ultrasound picture that we've gotten. So like I said, this was at seven weeks and four days. There's the little baby right there. And it was just so exciting. I'm so thankful that Benny was able to go into this appointment with me because I would have been so terrified going by myself and it was just, oh, it was so reassuring and it was just so beautiful hearing the baby's heartbeat. So week eight was when I started a symptom that I didn't have with the other girls. So this symptom was very odd for me when it started and I was really confused on what was happening because I've never experienced it before in my other three pregnancies. The taste of water was like I was drinking something metallic. It was so gross. I could not drink water. I didn't even want to like think about water because it was just so disgusting. It gave me this nasty metallic taste in my mouth. And at week eight, I was still living off of bagels and cream cheese. I was still obviously eating other things, but bagels and cream cheese were the main thing that never made me sick. Everything else was so disgusting. Another thing was I had a really bad like aversion to spicy food. I wanted nothing to do with spicy foods, which is so odd to me too, because in all of my other pregnancies, I craved spicy foods all of the time. And I know a lot of people will say that's a boy symptom, but that wasn't the case for me, obviously, because all of my pregnancies have been girls and all I wanted was spicy food. I wanted nothing to do with sweets, but this time it has been different. I want nothing to do with spicy foods. Just talking about it right now is... Mm -mm. So week nine is when acid reflux and heartburn started. Like I said, spicy foods gross me out, so I haven't been eating that. But I'm still getting acid reflux and heartburn, which sucks so bad because like i said in my other pregnancies i was eating spicy foods all the time so the acid reflex and the heartburn was kind of a given because i was doing it to myself by eating all the spicy foods but this time around i'm not eating the spicy foods and i'm still dealing with acid reflex and heartburn and week nine was also when everything was making my stomach hurt so bad anything even my bagels and cream cheese were making me sick and I'm not talking about throwing up this might be TMI but they were giving me the runs I was in the bathroom every single night for the full week nine 
and it was terrible literally anything i ate upset my stomach another odd symptom that i had for week nine that i didn't have in any of my other pregnancies was i couldn't drink coffee and it wasn't even because the taste of coffee was gross to me it still tasted normal but i couldn't get past the smell of coffee it smelled so bad to me it smelled like somebody was burning their hair or something it just smelled so gross that sums up week nine for week 10 another symptom that i had this time around that i didn't have with the girls was oily skin i usually wear primer whenever i do my makeup but i cannot wear primer anymore it literally just makes my skin look so bad i'm having to like touch up with powder during the day because it's just an oily mess and it's so gross because i've never dealt with oily skin i just i don't like it and it's driving me insane and also i have been breaking out i know you guys probably can't tell but i have been breaking out and that's another symptom that i didn't experience in my other pregnancies i've been breaking out like along my hairline around my chin underneath my chin i've had a few like blemishes right here nothing too bad but i definitely didn't have that with my other girls so that's pretty much the only new symptom that i was experiencing for week 10. i was still very nauseous all day still very exhausted i was still dealing with reflex and heartburn still anti-spicy food at 10 weeks and five days i did go in for another appointment with my ob this appointment was very nerve-wracking for me and this was a very hard day for me because at 10 weeks pregnant with my angel baby everly that's when we found out like everything with her brain and that was like when everything changed for us in my pregnancy but thankfully our baby looks healthy and i did get another ultrasound appointment so this was at 10 weeks and five days as you guys can see versus seven weeks and four days and then 10 weeks and a few days the baby has grown a lot which was so fun to see because you could see like the baby's feet the baby's hand and the baby was just wiggling like crazy so this was very nerve-wracking but it turned out to be a really good appointment the day after i had that appointment at 10 weeks and six days i ended up going into the lab to get some blood work done as well as my glucose test a lot of you guys were asking me why i had my glucose test done so early and you guys were very concerned why i had it so early and it wasn't because i have like history of gestational diabetes or anything like that i've never had any issues like that in any of my previous pregnancies but the reason I had it done so early was just because everything that happened with Everly, my OB this time around, since I am a new patient to her, she just really wants to be cautious and make sure there's no other like underlying issues that I have. Moving on to week 11. Week 11 was when my belly started to form. I had a little baby bump going on at week 11 already which is probably like the earliest my bump has ever made an appearance. So at this point, at week 11, my jeans were really tight. I mostly wear high-waisted skinny jeans. They're not working for me anymore, so I'm currently in leggings. Leggings are all that fit me right now. Another very odd symptom that I have that I've never experienced in my other pregnancies is dandruff. So I don't know why I have dandruff. I didn't even know it was a pregnancy symptom but apparently it is and uh, yeah it's just i don't like it at all it's gross so at this point at week 11 i was still dealing with acid reflex heartburn week 11 was when i started to really become out of breath i was slowly turning into darth vader even the simplest tasks like sitting here and just chatting with you guys i am constantly taking deep breaths i'm huffing and puffing and it's just it's so bad like i am so out of breath over anything i had my first real craving at week 11 and i'm still currently craving it 
I wish I had some right now because my mouth is watering just thinking about it and it's such a random craving but I want Chuck E. Cheese pizza and Parmesan breadsticks so bad like it just sounds so good to me it can't be pizza and breadsticks from anywhere else like I don't want Domino's I don't want Pizza Hut, I want Chuck E. Cheese pizza and Parmesan breadsticks. Week 12 was when I started to see the light at the end of the tunnel. My nausea has been slowly getting better. At this point, at week 12, if I stay on top of my eating, then I am good to go. Occasionally, I am nauseous throughout the day, but it's not consistently like I've been. I'm starting to get my energy back, so I'm napping less, which is really great because I feel like I've been a lot more productive at, since hitting week 12. Um, water has been tasting better, so at week 12, since then, I have been great to drinking water. I've been drinking multiple cups a day, so feel really great about that. Some new symptoms that I started feeling at week 12 was breast pain and round ligament pain, which is probably the earliest I've ever felt round ligament pain. And I know it's round ligament pain because it feels like I have pulled muscles down below, like on the sides of my stomach. So that's been really fun. <laughs> so I've been experiencing that. And then I've also been experiencing breast pain and it is the worst. It's like on the side leading into my armpits. It's just so tender right there. Another thing that happened at week 12, which was extremely important, me and Benny both went to the lab and we got testing done. So I got double the testing because I am the pregnant one, obviously. So I ended up having two tests done. One of the tests was to check on baby. So they're going to look at all of this baby's chromosomes and make sure this baby is good. Everly, my angel baby, did have trisomy 13. So that is a fear of mine that this baby is going to have it again, which is why I had the genetic testing done. So that way we can at least rule out trisomy 13. So currently as I'm sitting here filming this, I still haven't gotten those results back. So I will definitely update you guys once I get those. The other test that I had done was for myself and Benny. It was literally just a quick blood draw. So it wasn't anything crazy. It is the carrier test. The reason why we had that done is because we want to know if we carry the gene for holoprosencephaly. Holoprosencephaly is what Everly had as well as the trisomy 13. So at first we weren't going to get this carrier testing done just because we've met with genetic counselors before and we went over like all of our history and we were given the likelihood of us being carriers was basically very slim. But after just talking it over, we decided to get it done as well as the genetic testing. So we got that done at 12 weeks. Like I said, we still haven't gotten those results back. So I'm praying everything comes back great and we are not carriers. So looking back at my notes, I forgot to tell you guys at week 10, I switched from taking prenatal pills to gummy vitamins because the nausea was so bad that the prenatal vitamins were making my nausea like times a hundred so I could not keep down pills. So I switched to gummy vitamins at week 10 and at week 13 since I've been feeling better, I'm not really nauseous, I've gotten my appetite back, I switched back to taking pills. So these are the prenatal vitamins that I've been taking. This is the gummy that I was taking in the beginning of my first trimester because like I said the pills were making me nauseous. So this is by the brand Nature Made, and this is their mixed berry prenatal vitamins. I will say gummy vitamins are so good if you're dealing with nausea, but if you are going to take gummy vitamins, I suggest you also take um, iron supplement because gummy prenatals do not contain iron, and iron is very, very important in your pregnancy. So I would definitely, of course, talk to your OB about it, talk to your doctor about it, but I just wanna put that little disclaimer out there that gummy prenatals do not 
have iron in them. So the prenatal vitamins that I'm back taking again is by One A Day, and this is just their women's multivitamin prenatal supplement. So these are the ones that I take. These are amazing. They're really easy to get down. I don't have any issues with this, but they did increase my nausea so i definitely don't recommend these if you're extremely nauseous so that is pretty much the entire recap of my first trimester symptoms craving weird things that have been going on all of that stuff so now i'm gonna go ahead and go into my instagram and see what questions you guys have for me regarding the first trimester so the first question is when is the gender reveal going to be I have no idea because like I said, we still haven't gotten our test results from the genetic test. Obviously that is going to give us the gender as well because they're going to look at baby's chromosomes. So not sure when the gender reveal is going to be, but it should be really soon. Whose first trimester sickness was the worst? Definitely this baby. The nausea has been so bad this time. So definitely this baby. Who showed the fastest? this baby as well whose pregnancy was the easiest layla's 100 percent. my first pregnancy piece of cake did you start to buy any baby stuff yet no i actually haven't which has been so hard but i want to know if we're having a boy or girl first before i start buying things i'm not gonna buy like straight up pink things and you know blue things but I definitely want to know the gender first before I start buying things. I will say though, I do have a registry already because I am just filling it up with stuff that I love. So that way, once I do know the baby's gender, I can just start buying things off of there. Any differences between this pregnancy and previous ones, like symptoms? Yes, 100%. I talked about it in this video. This pregnancy has been so different. Um, cravings have been different, symptoms have been different. I've never dealt with dandruff. I've never had acid reflux this early. I've never had aversions to spicy foods. Just, there's so many things that have been different this pregnancy. Did you ever have bleeding with any four pregnancies in your first trimester? Yes. For both Aurora and Layla, I did have spotting, but it wasn't like really bad. It was just like a little bit here and there. And it was also brown spotting, which means it was old blood. With Everly, I did have bleeding, which looking back at it now, I honestly feel like my body was trying to get rid of the pregnancy because I was bleeding a lot. I thought for sure I was miscarrying. I even had Benny take me into the ER one night and they gave me an ultrasound, everything came back fine. But I was bleeding a lot with her and it was bright red bleeding. So I had a lot of bleeding with Everly. Does this pregnancy feel weird? Why do you think it's a boy? Uh, I don't know, like there's, there's lots of things that are different from this pregnancy, but ever since I tested positive, a boy baby just automatically popped in my mind. I've been drawn to looking at boy clothes and just like boy things in general. So I don't know, it's just like this really strong feeling that I've had since day one. Do you feel like you show earlier with each pregnancy? 100% yes. For my first pregnancy, I didn't start showing until I was like almost six months. So definitely you start showing a lot faster. Are you planning to find out gender before birth or wait till birth? We are already waiting on the results, so definitely before birth. Are you at risk for anything or is the baby at risk? As far as we know right now, baby is healthy and everything is looking great. All right guys, well that is everything recapping my first trimester with baby number four, our rainbow baby. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will show you guys my bump at the end of this video, but if you enjoyed it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Make sure you guys are subscribed to the Moran family and make sure you hit that bell. That way you guys always get notified every single time we upload. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys. Bye.